Welcome back to Bloomberg West. I'm Emily Chang. Early stage investors take big chances on risky ideas. Our next guest is revered as one of the top super angel investors in Silicon Valley. Fortune magazine named him one of the eight rising VC stars, and Forbes ranked him number 17 on its Midas list. He's invested in Twitter, Reputation.com, and several other startups. Mike Maples of Floodgate joins us here in the studio. Welcome back to Bloomberg West. Always Thanks. great to have you on the Thanks show. So first of all, I have to get your thoughts on yeah. Netflix. I know you're a big fan of Reed yeah. Hastings, but even he is saying here, I messed up. How badly did he mess up? Well, I, I guess time will tell in some ways. Uh, one of the things I admire about Reed is that from the very beginning, people have counted Netflix out. Uh, shipping DVDs by mail has always been perceived to just be a hard business. And so I remember in the early days of Netflix, people didn't even know if DVDs would be mainstream, much less if you could ship them in the mail. And then in about 2005, I remember uh, everybody saying that Netflix will not survive, that Blockbuster has clicks and mortar, they have a better, more flexible program. And I think at that time, Netflix was traded about 10 bucks a share. And so uh, what I've seen is that just time and time again, people have underestimated that company and always they've delivered. And sometimes in the short term, they've been misunderstood. Sometimes in the short term, uh, the business has looked like it was in trouble. And then time and time again, like a phoenix, they've risen from you know, the, the doubters and the ashes and, and done great. So you understand why he's doing this, but are customers going to understand this and are customers going to forgive him? Well, I think clearly that uh, the communication could have been better. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think even Reed uh, disagrees with that. Uh, I think that the, the, the sort of the larger meta point is that I think he's come to understand and the companies come to understand that the streaming business has a pretty different business structure and business model uh, than the DVD rental business. And, you know, it, it, I think that most companies try too hard to create false synergies. Uh, you know, HP buys the PC business from Compaq and now maybe they're going to spin it out someday and they buy the web os business from palm and it looks like they're out of that business and so i, I think that that reed is being uh, very realistic along with the rest of the management team uh, the communication clearly could have been better but it's funny you know over the sweep of the last 10 years i like to say that there have been three groups that I think have executed really well. One is Steve Jobs at Apple, uh, one is Reed Hastings, and then the other is the Navy SEALs. And I think that those three the groups... The Navy SEALs, what did yeah, they I think do, right? Those three groups, <laughs> when I hold up people as great executors who just time and time again delivered, uh, I just think those, those, those three groups uh, deserve the benefit of the doubt. Okay, well, let's talk about Groupon then. You know, you know sure. we've been talking about the IPO delay. Groupon's IPO has been delayed, along with other companies that we're hoping to list this season. Are those companies risking serious consequences if, if they don't go out? Well, um, I think that when you file your S1, uh, it reminds me, when you play chess, there's the, there are combination moves. And if you start a combination move, like say a fianchetto, and then you second guess yourself in the middle of it, uh, you really open yourself up to just getting owned on the chessboard. And so I think that, that the process of filing your S1, you have to be pretty convinced that you're ready to go through with it, and that you're ready to follow through and finish the combination move. And so um, I think that they will ultimately uh, follow through with it, along with some of the other companies. But when I step back from it, I think what this is really about is there's this meta sort of wave of social computing and it's coming of age. You know, four or five years ago, people questioned whether social networking even has a business model. And here now you, you see people talking about Facebook's economy creating 150,000 new jobs. And so I don't know about, I don't know if Groupon will be eBay or eToys, but if I look at this as, as a wave, I think there are companies like Facebook, Groupon, Zynga, uh, LinkedIn's already out, Twitter, we're not sure what's going to happen. But I just think that there's a basket of very valuable uh, relevant companies. Some will do better than others, but I think that the, the fact that we're talking about this IPO window suggests that that wave of companies is coming of age. Are those companies coming of age and will be around? Will they be around in 20 years? Well, it, it's interesting because Ann and I, my partner Ann and I, like to look at it that way. So we, we say if a company is worth more than $5 billion, generally it's being valued not in what it's going to accomplish in the next year or even the next five years. It's more of a function of what they'll do in 10 to 20 years from now. And so when I look at those five companies, say, you know, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Groupon, and Zynga, uh, I like to think who is the most likely to be strategically relevant in 20 years. And if I were to rank them, I would say Facebook 1, Twitter 2, LinkedIn 3, Zynga 4, 
and Groupon probably number five. And so, but that's independent of what their numbers are today or what their profits are today. That's just my opinion of which companies will matter the most over time. You have a more favorable view of Groupon than some of the other people that we've been interviewing. I want to talk to you a little bit about Twitter. Yeah. Uh, Fred Wilson and B. John Sibet leaving the board of Twitter along with some other management changes that have happened over the last year. On top of that, why did they leave? Is, it, is this because they're not getting along with Jack Dorsey, who recently returned to the company? What's going on here? Well, I, I don't really think it's that gossip-driven, right? I, I think that fundamentally Twitter is building a real company. And, you know, Twitter, I guess, like Netflix, is making the types of moves that they need to make to be successful in the long run. And so, you know, I think that this is a really encouraging move. And I don't think Why it's... Why do you think it's encouraging? Well, I just, I don't think it has to be a negative on Fred or Bijan. I think they did a great job and, and really helped the company uh, in the early phases of the business and, and had a great contribution. But I think over time, what it takes to be successful changes. And companies that embrace change and get out ahead of the change usually do better than those that are sort of forced to change under duress. As an investor, I mean, what do you want to see happen at Twitter? I mean, are you hoping that this is the core management, that this is the, the management team that's going to lead the company forward? I mean, why aren't you on the board of Twitter? Well, I, I, don't know. <laughs> I haven't been asked, and I'm not sure I'd be qualified. But, but um, I guess the way I look at it is I want Twitter to be a long-term, strategically valuable franchise tech company. And uh, history would suggest that there never is one management team that does that. Usually there is a, a, you know, a flux of talent through time. And the question is, are you going to bring on new talent when you're under duress and you need a turnaround person? Or are you going to get ahead of trends and events and, uh, you know, kind of this, what's Gretzky saying, skate to where the puck is already going or is about to go? That's the second puck reference Oh, the second show. one. Okay. And I don't, I don't even play hockey or really know the rules that well, although shark games are fun. Yeah. All right. Mike Maples of Floodgate, always appreciate your insights here on the show. Thanks again Thanks for, for joining me. us.